Ladies and gentlemen, this is the vacant WBO European Light Welterweight Championship. Please welcome into the ring from Liverpool, Tom Stalker! It's a hometown fixture for Tom Stalker, but oh so much is on the line. He swerved the British title eliminator with Chris Jenkins for this. And the theory is that a win will earn a top 15 ranking with the WBO. It's definitely go forward and accelerate for the winner, but it's question time for the loser. And at the age of 30, perhaps time is not necessarily on Talker, Stalker's mind. He's admitted that, but he's been buzzing since he moved out to the Macklin's gym in Marbella. And can he translate all of that now to the professional ranks at the time when he needs to most? Please welcome into the ring from Chorley, Jack Catterall! Jack Cattrall at just the age of 21 has already been catching the eye of many on the fringes and within the industry itself. Lee Beard bullish about his young Southpaw and anyone who saw the finish that he delivered when beating the previously unbeaten Nathan Brock last time out in July know this guy has ability. What we also know is he was outboxed in the early stages by Brock and Stalker can box. Big night, big opportunity for Jack Cattrall. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Warren for Queensbury Promotions, sponsored by Rainham Steel, proudly presents 10 three-minute rounds for the vacant WBO European Light World Awake Championship from the Echo Arena here in Liverpool. Your officials have been appointed by the WBO and your three scoring judges at ringside are Dave Paris, Alvin Finch and Sean Messer, all of the UK. Your WBO supervisor is Dave Roden of the UK. Your timekeeper at the bell is Gary Grennan. And when the action begins, your referee in charge is Mr. Mark Lyson of Liverpool. And now to introduce the contestants. Firstly, in the blue corner, with an unbeaten record that reads nine wins, with two KOs to his name. At yesterday's weigh-in, he scaled nine stone, 12 pounds, two ounces, and tonight he wears the gold and white shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former team GB 2012 captain from Liverpool, Tom Stalker. And across the ring in the red corner, with an unbeaten record of nine wins, with five KOs to his name. At yesterday's weigh-in, he scaled 10 stone, and tonight he wears the black shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing, from Chorley, Jack Catterall. Your referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Okay, boys, it's both in the dressing room. You know what I expect. Keep it clean. Okay, good luck to you, Ladies and gentlemen, at 10 3 rounds for the vacant WBO European Light Welterweight Championship. So here we go. Buckle up. Could be fight of the night. Plenty of people really looking forward to this one. If Stalker has his way, perhaps he'll just defuse it by outboxing. Young Catrell from the outset. So many people looking forward to this one, Barry. Well, it's a real test, isn't it? A real test for both of them. And you think that the more pressure's on Stalker, because you know, he's 30, he's the one with all the pedigree and the amateurs, and, and if he gets beat, where does he go? Well, Catrell will be in 21. And there's a risk we'll take it for this guy. He loses, he loses to a phenomenal amateur with all the 
all the backer behind him. And already, Kettle standing his ground, and he landed a couple of meaty right hands with a jab too. There's a certain focus and intensity. I, I think there's real belief in Kettle tonight. Well, he's coming off a sensation all isn't he? The wins are going to be full of confidence. And landing with that right hand, though, he no, won't much weight behind that shot, but that's an encouraging sign this early to be landing with that with that backhand against the southpaw who, who you know, dangles that, that right lead very, very low and invites you to throw that right hand. And he sort of swings away with his hands down sometimes, away from the punches, Stalker. It, as the criticism has been, he's seemingly got himself into harder fights early on in his pro career than perhaps his amateur talent should dictate. Line with some jabs, and that's surprising. And then again, too often. And a solid jab there from Catwell. Many people thought that the Nathan Brough victory was a, a sort of one-off spectacular punch, but there's something very orthodox in the way he set it up it was a clean it was a fluid shot it didn't look like a real heavy shot it just, he threw it just so so sweetly that's what stalker needs more moving more fainting oh, oh right hand. two right hands and stalker Ooh. tried to get back up he went down with two right hands he was hit when he was down too immediately back up stalker and one more minute to go So that's what Stoughton is doing, he's keeping that right, that right hand up. Well, well, well. And it's the jab from Cattrall that's setting everything up. It's been purposeful so far. Well, he hasn't been on box, that's the surprise about it. It's not a shock that he put Stoughton on the floor, the, the shock is that he's not being on box by Stoughton. There's real conviction in everything Cattrall's doing, right from the offset, conviction and belief. And what a start. That's better there from Stalker. But again, just too close. Is that front foot's too close for Stalker? So he's been able to. Found with the jab too easy. What a good, what a cracking start there from, from Young Jay Catterall. A good comeback from Stalker after he went down, but the damage had been done. And as Barry says, what a start from Catterall. Well, look at that. It's the jab. He's just keep too easy with the jab. And he hit me the one, two. In, and to Catrell's credit there, it looks like he hit Stalker on the floor. Cracking right hand there, just behind the ear almost. Yeah, there was two left Stalker, hands and then there was another one. Stalker went down and he got up and he hit him on the, on the way back up. Look at that there, just right on the, on the, on the edge of the jaw there, on the, just by the ear. Good shot. Back to the head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Back to the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the box. Forget about it. Okay. Stalker okay. seems okay. Give him a drink, yeah? Settle down. Yeah. Forget about that. He didn't see the shot, that's why. He got his head so low and he just come behind. The, almost be, he had his hands low, but his guard would have been there. Just come behind where his guard would be. Didn't see the shot. It was a clean, good shot from Catterall. And he's stalking, but he drops his hands too low. That's what it is. He boxes with a low hand, which is it's fine and awkward to box against. But once some guys figured it out, you've got to start keeping your hands up. The stalker's front foot just a little bit too close. He's got quite a wide stance for a boxer. Yeah, which is not so bad, because he, he jumps in out the range quite effectively. He's a little bit too close to the target, not making use of that. Good oh. shot again there from Catterall. Uh, yeah, and he's in trouble, Stalker. He's trying to cover up. He looks like he knows where he is, but again, that jab and then the, the sharp left hand on the back of it. Very impressive start, this, from Jack Catterall. And you're starting to think of all the stories you hear about, about Sparta, where Catterall said he had, he had Stalker in trouble. Maybe they were true. Well, I guess it's odd, and it, you know, we, I'll say a fight of this magnitude, and, and relatively, it is a fight with real implications. It, it, it was strange talk from theoretically an inexperienced camp, and I mean an inexperienced fighter, but there was real bullish statements coming out, statements of intent from Lee Beard and the team, and so far they're backing them up. But when you spat so many rounds together, and at least two have you, you know, you have an inner confidence knowing that you, you know, you've got sometimes you've got the guy's number. They both felt that, or they both portrayed that they felt that. And, but it seems like at the moment, Catterall has 
in the, so it's in the first round and three quarters. He's had Tom Stalker's number for sure. And, it, and it's not the fact that he's hit with the heavy shots, it's the fact that he's not being outboxed. He's not outboxing Stalker, but he's not being outboxed himself. He looked, oh, there's another right hand Cracking shot. jab followed by the left, and he goes to the body, and he's got Stalker down oh. again, and he hits him down on the floor again. Counts at 5 6. Seven, Stalker went down. Eight. Is he getting back up? Just. He went down, got up quickly, and then went down again. And there's the admonishment briefly from the referee for the punch when Stalker was on the deck. And uh, there's a minute to go. I think Cattle got a Cattle calling him on. He's literally got to jump all over Stalker, hasn't he? Stalker's still not, not quite there. Two knockdowns in two rounds. And Tom Stalker is hanging on for dear life. It's just a shocking it because Stalker just an ex, such an expert boxer, but not, not being able to box his opponent being too easy to hit. And Catterall just taking his time, showing tremendous timing, especially with that back left hand. Well, this Catterall's a menace. He's a real menace, and he can fight. Well, he's, con <laughs> he's controlled chaos, isn't he? Let's get it right. And, and that's the word, Barry, because he's completely controlled the distance in the centre of that ring right from the start. He's making Stalker miss, and then he's punishing him well, he, he every see, single time. You look at his face, you can see, you can see what Stalker's going to throw. Controlled fury from Jack Cattrall. Stalker down twice, two 10-8 rounds, and Jack Cattrall is flying. Just relax. Yeah. Just relax, breathe, yeah? <laughs> when you throw, you've got to throw more than one punch. Yeah, I'm lazy, you understand? I'm lazy, right. Suck up and breathe. You've got to throw more than one punch, you're just going to count yeah. you every time. Okay. Yeah? Let's switch on yeah. now, Tom. Okay. Yeah. Got to time, get busy. You got to move. Okay. Yeah. You got to move. You got to find. Got to give him yeah. different looks. And then bam, bam, bam. You got to steal it on him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just a barrage of punches. And there's the one. To be fair to Stock, yeah. he didn't complain at all. Whether he quite knew his whereabouts, who knows? But he wanted to get back up too quickly. Slight inexperience there. Then he went back down on the knee. A bit what? naughty from Jack Cattle, that's not once but twice now. I mean, you've got to be careful there because that, that might get him in a lot of trouble. But the corner told Stalker to stay down and take the nine count, take the eight count. It's, it's hard to see where Stalker goes from here now, isn't it? In this fight in particular because he, he's such an expert boxer, but not being able to box his opponent. He doesn't have the power to trouble Cattle. You wouldn't think in his going from his previous fights. So what he's did, he's going on the back foot now, trying to draw Cattle on. He's just drawing all his amateur experience now. Everything he's doing from all those trips away, because Catterall is just flying and he's really looking supersonic. His timing is excellent. Patience. I've rubbed that left hand over the top. Every time he hits Stork with it, he hurts him. Well, the problem now is, Paddy, he's, he's effectively four rounds down. He's almost got to win the lot. Yeah. That's the, the perspective of it. And it's been the jab, but even though obviously the, the left hand. It's been the win that's, that's put Stalker down, but it's been the jab of Cattrall that's really you know, troubled Stalker. Just been able to land with it every time. The jab's been impressive, and he... And it's been solid as well, Alex, and that's just a range fight, you know, he's stepping in behind it. Absolutely right. This is a great performance here from the MJ Cattrall. 21 years of age. Now, Chorley produced Michael Jennings, of course, who went on to win the British title challenge for a world title against Cotto, and it looks like they've got another talent on their hands in the northwest boxing next to say michael jennings one of our purer boxers we've had in the last 15 20 years pretty good drummer as well i believe jennings this guy cattle surely will be drumming up some support with this performance tonight on the back of that spectacular broth knockout as well can he maintain it Oh, oh, another one. Just skimming the target there. And again, just the, just the timing of, uh, of Stalker. And you usually just be able to just slide out the, out the distance with them shots. You just, can't, you just can't get out the way. And the patience of Cadwell as well. He didn't do nothing to leave for 30 seconds. Yeah, there seems absolute belief and conviction in what he's doing, what he knows he's got, and how he's going to go about this job. Let's remind you, the 
The guy's only 21. To be honest, I thought the broth fight flattered him slightly, and I thought he, he, he might get outboxed. I thought he had the power to trouble Stalker, I thought he might get outboxed, and <laughs> he hasn't been nowhere near that. That's better from Stalker. Yeah. Establishing he's his own jab. Yeah, his corner asked for more punches, didn't he? Don't just throw one shot, you'll get countered. And he's trying to heed that advice, and he's, he's maybe working his way back into this. Probably have his daughter. He's such a good thinker. He's been such a good boxer over the years that he'd only punch when he knew he's safe. And he, had, he hasn't had a chance to be safe yet, so he's not throwing enough work. And for me, he come good in the latter part of that round, but it's still a round that I edge Catterall. Don't give up the centre of the ring, okay? Stay in the middle of the ring. All right. Every time he backs, take a step back, yeah, just take a little gallop forward, okay? Yeah. As you step forward, and up behind that gallop, just a little faint, okay? Offset him. You just keep a little bit busy with your jab. You neglect it a little bit that round, okay? Right. Don't start looking for the big shots no. too soon, you know what I mean? Just, you, you, you've been hurting him with just, just letting the shots go and relax, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just a little bit more to the body off the jab now, okay? Yeah. Absolutely spot on from Lee Beard, he's calling it right, you'll recall Lee right. Beard of course go, 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 working with Ricky Hatton latterly that he was involved with right. Juan yeah, Guzman go, 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 as well and that, that was that was a tough ask. He's pretty I'm much involved with everybody, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah, Vusi Malinga, he was in Vusi Malinga's corner, wasn't he? Mm. But he's right about the jab and not forcing the work. Yeah. Into the fourth. Didn't look like it was going to get this far early on. And, that, and speaking of jabs, that's what Stalker needs. He needs to land with some solid jabs. See that little combination? That's the usual combination that Stalker has so much success with. Nice little three punch flurry, and he's just falling short. Certainly, the, the sort of punch power has been coming with Catrell as, as he's developed. He's knocked out two of his last three, three of his last five. Only two years now as a pro since his debut in Manchester. Down the M62, he's sparkling here in Liverpool tonight. Yeah, just squared up his feet there, Catrell, and a lot stalk in the land with, with a couple of shots, not heavy shots, but a couple of scoring punches. jabs to the body and a few more punches land there from Catrell he's very accurate when he lets that left hand go and, and that's that's the fall back of the fall fall down of a, of a low hand defense there from Stalker moving up the way but if you keep throwing punches you just you, know, you can't move up the way forever and Catrell just kept throwing the punches and landed them with the last couple but this this sort of pace right now you would think this would suit Stalker the, 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 you, you always would tend to think he was the finger out of the two. But the patience of, of, of such a young man from, from Cattle has been tremendous. Stalker trying to find a way. That's a good left hand there from Stalker, and again. I bet that's his first real success of the fight. And that's, that's what he needs, you don't worry about hurting this guy, you don't worry about trying to, trying to show you're tough and just score the punches. And he's like a climber at the very, very bottom of the rock face in the mountain, and there's so, so much more to go. He's got a tiny little foothold and he's clinging on to that rock, but it's an awful long way up for Tom Stocker. With that left hand again there from Caterell, just, just timed really well. He's just patient with it, just pepper him with the jabs, not doing much work. But he wants to be sure when he throws that left hand, he's going to connect, and he has every time. Nice little right hook to the body, in close from Catrell, whose defence is good too, up close. It's good response there from Stalker, and again. And he's really digging in and trying to find a way, Tom Stalker. Drawing on all of that oh. amateur experience that Saw him win Commonwealth gold in 2010. Did he win that round? Do you know what? I don't think he did. You'll catch him. Alex. Don't look I think it was don't close. It. I, mean, I, I was going to give him the wrong, but I think Cat yeah. won the last. Just he hit with the cleaner hand, yeah. the shots. You can't be hesitating, looking for the perfect yeah. punch. You just got to start firing. 
Ja? Hvor var det? Så kom. Så kom. Du kan ikke hesitere. Lad ham gå. Bap, bap, bap. Ja? Ja. Let's push him back a bit. Take his leave, which is away. Ja, exakt. Ja? You gotta try it. Double jab, backhand, bam, 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 bam. Spraying down back. Double jab, backhand, go. Yeah. Gotta back him up a little bit. Okay. You gotta try a different way. Yeah. Okay. Much better round now. Much better. Yeah. Okay. Suck up. Deep breath, Roy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it. Let's back him up. That's it. It's in panic, yeah, but there was some. Yeah, well, I, I thought he had a much, much better round there. He, he had a much better round, he did, didn't you? And, and, and he could have argued that he, that he won it, but I just, you know, he just worked at the last the last 30 seconds of that round again. Catherall, when he did, he let his hands go. He lands with the cleaner, harder shots where the Hall of Stalkers are peppering punches, and, not, and he didn't throw enough, but he was winning the round. But just by frustrating Catherall, that's the difference. Stalker's not really a guy who's, who's a busy fighter, is he? He's a, he's a thinker, he's a technical technical boxer oh he's worked so hard out in that Macklin's gym taking Rachel and the two kids out to Marbella he's very much rerouted his life out there he, well that in threat right now well it is he, he got tremendous skills Stork and there's no denying that he's just found the guy here who's, who's just it seems to have his number, you know, he, he can time Stalker when he comes in, he's not he's not being rushed or he's not panicking when, when Stalker's peppering him with little shots. But a quieter four minutes maybe, Barry, yeah, from yeah, Ketchel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Stalker's been a little bit busy and, that's, and like, the, like the corner was saying, he needs to keep continue that, he needs to throw more punches. You've got to be like a buzzsaw around Ketchel, you've got to keep working, keep him spinning. We'll keep him off balance, we can't let go with that big left hand. You can see him setting it up, Catra, you can see here. The only way he disguises well is that he's patient with it. That's lovely there from Stalker. That was better, punching from a longer distance. Yeah, I think the right hand certainly landed on the glove of Catra. I'm quite impressed by his defence as well. He, there's, there's a degree of composure yeah. up close, isn't there? Well, I think his vision's quite good, Kadra. I think he can see things coming. He can see the punches coming, so he's not—he's not panicking. Usually, Stalker, you know, he's elusive and he's awkward. Throws his punches from waist height; they're hard to defend against. But so far, it's been a good round for Stalker. Been the busier of the two. Inside the final minute, drama free. So far in this round, after that fizzing start for Cattrall. Slowly but surely, Stalker's been working his way back into the fight. Well, Cattrall just a little bit too patient in this round. Good jab there, though, from Jay Cattrall. That's better from Stalker. Those hands up nice and high, blocking the shots. Catro just missing a bit there. Yeah, there's a clear stalker run. Stalker definitely getting a little into it now. Well, he could have won the last two, Alex. Go. Oh. Deep breath, Jack. Give me the drink. Drink, drink, drink. Okay, a little bit busy, okay? Short on um, your punch, you're still, you're still too far away. I want you a bit closer than that. You can walk to him and jump behind your shoulder. You can't hit fuck all there. Right. Just walk, as you step, bang, as you step, bang. Then se second or third one, drop the short left hand in. Put a little bit more to the body with as well. Like, drop, bam, 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 okay? Yeah, yeah. Make sure the in the right Just don't, not reaching. don't relax too much where you're not, you know, you're a bit busier, All okay? Right. Just keep walking forward, don't let him come forward, okay? Okay? Good, good, good. Yeah. Some seconds, boys. A little high move, eh? And just as Stoker's corner, Seamus Mackling were asking him for to throw more punches, so Lee Beard telling Jack Catter just needs to be a bit busier to, to go forward, almost to walk him down, which he seemed to do through the first two rounds. Yeah, and it was beyond a solid jab, and that's what he, he's neglected in the last couple of rounds. Well, Catterall didn't do anything in that round. Well, he didn't know there's a nice little sharp punch there. 
when Catherwell lets his hands go, he looks the boss. Let's be honest. And I guess in that round, he never threw any, he never threw any punches until the, the last 20 seconds when Stalker was already, already in his rhythm, and that's what Stalker needs to do: get in that rhythm quick in the round and then continue it. All right, listen. If he lets Stalker nick rounds like he did the last one, he will kick his backside black and blue tomorrow yeah. morning. That's good from Stalker. No power in the shots and nothing troubling Catterell, but a couple of those shots are landing punches. And also it keeps Catterell quiet. And a good left hand there from Stalker coming forward. And we should just sort of broach the subject now. Here we are in the sixth. And these are guys who've been six and, and eight round fighters. Catterell went eight rounds with Christoph Zott. There's a it's sort a of good little test on the way up, having only been stopped by the likes of Luke Campbell the other day, Michael Zuski, at a higher weight um, across in, across the Atlantic. But, you know, up to a 10-rounder for the first time with the uncharted yeah, territory as Cattrall lets them go again. Good left hands from Cattrall then, two of them landing and Stalker in, in a bit of trouble. Not seriously hurt, but he rocked them back again. And wrong with, with Stalker was having some success in, and you've got to just say all of a sudden now, Catterall's the one on top again. But there's damage under the right eye. Ah, it's right on the cheekbone, Barry of Tom Stalker. He's already, it's quite swollen and badly bruised. He's bleeding a little bit as well, I think. And it, he just pawed at it, didn't yeah. he? And I, I think that might have been a left hand as well. Heads have got close, but I'm sure it was a oh, left hand. Oh, there's another one. And they trade up close, and when they do that, it's Catterall who comes out on top. To be fair to Stalker, he's willing to trade up close, but it's, you do feel every time Catterall lands, he's gonna, he causes Stalker trouble. That eye is really swelling up for Stalker. Right below the eye on the cheekbone, and there's a jab right on it from Cattrall. That's a good jab again from Cattrall. He needs to use that jab more often. He, he can push Stalker back with it. He needs to do that, keep him on the back foot, keep him going back in straight lines, and then let that left hand go. He's, so trying, he's trying to time Stalker. He wants to time Stalker coming forward. Because he's had him down a couple of, a couple of times already and hasn't hurt. He wants that. He wants that show we all knock out and yet the first round particularly second round he was good going forward he didn't look like he yeah. needs to counter punch Catrell evading most of those punches at the end of that round and it was a, a big one from Jack Catrell and he very much responded to his corner's instructions from the previous round It was a weird round because Stalker was doing quite well up until he got caught with that left hand there of, of Catrell who then all of a sudden then let his hands go. And they're the shots you remember, aren't they? They're the, the heavy shots where Stalker's peppering him with his, with his punches, landing with a few clean sh scoring shots, but the big shots, the shots you remember are from Jay Catrell and he just took that round right onto the grasp there of, of Tom Stalker, who really, you know, was got a mountain to climb. If you don't step it out, they're going to stop it. <laughs> Here we go then into the seventh. That was a. That was quite an interesting statement. Was that from Frank Hopkins in the corner? Did he say? That, yeah. Is he say? Did he say? that I think he said, if you don't step it up, they're going to stop it. Wow. It's, well, some people need some different sort of motivation, don't they? Or maybe that's what they're saying. Listen, you know, when, you, when you're punching it, like when you're letting your hands go, when you're punching at a high work rate, you've had a bit of success. There goes the left hand, landing once again from Jack Cattrall, a young fighter, impressing tonight on the biggest night of all, and a fighter who is uh, just uh, four or five weeks away from his biggest day, Chris Eubank Jr set to face Billy Joe Saunders of course in November and we'll be down there at XL looking forward to that bringing that to you here on Box Nation he's up next and again Catterall's deciding to come forward behind that solid jab looking good the timing of, of, of Catterall's been really good something I would be surprised with his boxing ability better his, his defense has been quite good he's been able to read almost everything that Stalker's thrown at him which is very impressive because Stalker is a, is a, is a real class operator and be able to read his shots as something of Stalker's now used to come up against. And I wonder, Barry, because people have probably asked the question, to what extent has it been Stalker's grit and technique that's 
that's played into the last three runs and how much maybe has, has Cattrall taken his foot off the gas? Where's the balance there? Well, he has, but I think Stalker up the pace and, and Cattrall you know, being patient was maybe over patient, looking, looking for the for the show wheel knockout. But I think he's hurt Stalker with a body shot just you know, 20 seconds earlier. The eye of Stalker looking a little bit of a mess now. He's really hurting with that jab and there was a left to the oh, body and close. Lovely from Stalker there, that cut off the ropes. First time we've seen Jay Catrell blink and he's still blinking. Yeah, he is. In fact, he's cut, cut under the right eye. So that flurry from Stoker that Barry touched on, a little highlight, has got its result. And there's an element of Catrell being perturbed. Something Stoker needed three rounds earlier, though, isn't it? You, you know, you can't know Stoker showing a little bit of grit in this round. A round that you know, really has been pretty much dominated by Catrell for most of the, most of the path. The Stoker coming back into it. There's a right hand and a left, and blinking, both of them damaged under their respective eyes, and at the moment, Cattrall, who was winning the round, is just a little bit copying flat. some punishment late on. He is, he's looking a little bit flat there, that, that eye troubling him. That uppercut was a cracking shot from Stalker. That's really nice. It's amazing. Stalker just not accurate enough those with, with those swings. A big effort this from Stalker, you have to say, He's shown an awful lot of heart after that horrendous start. He's pretty much done what Cantrell done a few rounds earlier. He's gone there, had a bad start of the round, and just stole that round right on the Cantrell's grasp. Who won that one, Paddy? I give that to Stalker, just on the tenacity alone. Give me a clock, give me a clock, give me a clock. I think it was a close I think Cantrell was having a boss in the first, first 30 seconds minute. Stalker picked on that gum show, really went for it. Caught fire in that, in that round there. It all started with this little combination of the ropes and a lovely uppercut. Obviously ripping the eye there of Catherell and, and blinking and troubling, but and there Stalker was that needed that. He did need it because he, needed, he was in all sorts of trouble. There was a moment when he backed off from, from a, a strong jab on that mouse under his, his right eye and it, it looked as though Cattrell was taking over at that point of the round. But well, Cattrell was doing what he was doing in the early rounds again. You know, sort of solid jab trying to bully Stalker around the ring, bully him to the ropes, and he did. But Stalker had bit on that gun, showed a little bit of grit. And it was good to see, and he needs more of that now, and it needs a big push now in his last three rounds. I, I actually thought the third and fourth rounds were very, very tight, Barry. I know you gave them to Cattle, yeah. I thought they yeah, were tighter. Yeah. I, I, I just think, I think, you, I, for me, you got too much to climb, sure. Stalker, now. It's, but it's all about you know, just making the effort. It was third and fourth, by the way. If you did give them to Stalker, you might have a one-point fight, but I, I Barry's, Barry's yeah, got I it the other way. Yeah, I don't think so. I think, it's, I think, I think Cattle's... No, in quite a handy lead. The Stalker showing some great determination to go with those skills. But the skill path hasn't worked for Stalker tonight, which is probably a first for him. And his silky skills it hasn't quite worked out for him. And so he's had to grit it out. And the, the interesting thing for us on the, the safety of this side of the ropes, the comfort of being outside that ring, and the same for people watching some is these are guys now injured having to think, they're having to ask questions. We're learning about them perhaps as much as they're learning about themselves. Yeah, and, and for me, I think Cadwell, you know, we, we applaud him for his patience. He needs to step on the gas a little bit himself now. He's, he's shown and proved he can push Stalker back again, landing with some good shots there. Cadwell again, Stalker gritting his teeth to be fair, mind they're not backing up. And blood's coming down from his nose as well. I wonder if there's damage to that for Tom Stalker. He's having to answer an awful lot of questions here tonight. The Stalker will respond with some good shots, but his good shots up against Catherall's good shots are just not the same, are they? The weight and the, you know, the, the, the quality of the shot is all from Catherall. And that's why then those rounds where you said it could have gone the other way, you have to give them to the young Jay Catherall. Let him go! Let him go! Just over a minute left of the eighth, and then uncharted territory awaits for both these fighters. I guess people will wonder about Cattrall, is, is it just his style or is he one pace? But he is, he, I, he, he may seem it to be honest, but he can let his hands go with speed. He's just, he's just doing the right thing, he's not taking any risks against a guy who can, you, know, you, you, you jump in against Stalker and he'll pick you off all day long. you will rattle the combination off, he'll just spin and you'll be at the other side of the ring before you know it. So Cattrall's just trying to time him coming forward. All he hasn't done, he hasn't used that jab in the last few rounds. The referee has hardly had to do a thing on Mike, just briefly there. 
inside the final minute of this eighth. Feel away finish out there, Tom Stalker. Trading jabs in centre ring, and Lee Bead was asking for Kettle to resume control of that aspect of the fight. Good body shots here from Stalker. But oh, a big left there. hand. Stalker's unsteady. Referee has a good look, and he comes in along with the towel at the very same time. And in the closing seconds of the eighth round, Jack Cattrall with a career high knockout and stoppage of Tom Stalker, whose career may well be in tatters. Well, that's just an absolutely tremendous performance there from Young J. Cattrall. Really is, really is. You know, just show maturity beyond his years. Not just punching power, which we, we thought he had over Stalker. But his boxing ability, his vision was great. You, you could see everything that Stalker wanted to throw at times. And Stalker showed some real grit and determination in the latter parts of that fight, trying to bring it back on. But that one two right down the centre of the guard there, that wobbling Stalker, and took a big left hand. The referee on the corner, you know, uh, in unison, you know, wanting the fight to be finished. And, and you can't complain with that. Look at that. He's, the, he's dangerous here, Alex. He's tired as well as hurt. And the timing. From that distance, he didn't even have to force it. It was a replica of the Nathan Bruff knockout. Short jab, is it, is big, this, long left hand. This performance is a stand-up performance. This is a performance where it, it, people will people will stand up and take notice now of this young Jay Catterall, who looked who looked tremendous from the first round. You know, he had a couple of rounds where he looked like Stalker was trying to work his way back into the fight, but he was always kind of a mile behind. Stalker showed some great determination. Catterall, for me, showed all the quality. They were bullish in the build-up, they were right to have belief. Chorley has a new young star, and his name is Jack Cattrall. Ladies and gentlemen, at 2.48 of round eight, the referee has stopped the contest. He deemed Tom Stalker was in no position to continue. The winner and the new WBO European light welterweight champion in the red corner from Chorley, Jack Cattrall! Well, you feel for Tom Stoker, who's on the Ladies downside of this particular story. He played his part, but the upside is Jack Cattrall. And the beauty is, there's Thank all you, so much more gentlemen. to come from this 21-year-old. Just 21 years of age, Jack Cattrall. He read this fight absolutely right, by the way, to the 21-year-old. Tom's struggling to adapt to the pros. The time is right for me, and my strength will help if it goes long it went as far as the eighth the towel came in referee mark license stopped it absolutely riley and jack cattrall from chorley becomes the wbo light welterweight champion steve lillis as, as the uh, chorley chants ring out around the echo arena what a night what a night for him for the young 21 year old to beat you know one of the the best amateurs in the world at his weight over the last decade. An absolutely fantastic performance, you know. You know, you, you know everything Tom needed to do, be elusive and stay on his toes, he wasn't. But they're the first two rounds, just after the start, the start that Jack got off to, he was the start. <laughs> well, here are the, here are the first two rounds. When you've just won the fight, you're entitled to yeah. walk in front of a camera, by the way. These are the first couple first of rounds. Two rounds. And yeah, his, his power was just too much for, for Tom from there, you know. And they really fancied getting the job done quick, as you know. It's the second round, this one, Steve. That's the second. Night. And, and poor, poor Tom just didn't know where he was. And you thought then, their prediction they, they, that Jack would win the fight inside four rounds was going to come true. But although, you know, all the glory belongs... He took, he a, on the he floor took a shot and Mark and Lyson Mark dealt Lyson. with that very well. He and had a very Lyson good night in there. Mark gave did, a word, did, word, word of him in this corner behind us yeah. straight after that. Warned we did that again, he would be in trouble. And the, the stoppage, Mark Lyson had a great fight. He, as a he had a very there. good night. And the stoppage in the eighth before we hear fr 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 from, the, from the new champion, that was absolutely right Perfect. as well. The referee was about Stalker to jump was in wobbling there. all over the shop. Could have stopped it earlier, actually. Yeah, I, I thought the, the stoppage was, was bang on and the towel was coming in at the right time. But we've got to give Tom Stalker some credit for the guts and toughness he showed tonight. But um, all the glories is well deserved there by Jack Cattrall. He's going to go on to bigger and better things. There's some great fights from out there right right now you know, at British and Commonwealth level. Just the British champions, Woody Lemon, Commonwealth champion Dave Ryan. 
he, he would certainly fancy his chances against both of them, although, you know, there's work, things he has to improve on himself. He'll know that. He has kept his O in sensational style. We'll talk about Tom Stalker in just a moment. Let's go down to the new champion and Steve Bunce. Thanks very much, Jim. Well, congratulations, first of all, Jack. Jack, the first two rounds, it was going all your way. Then it slowed down a little bit. It became a little bit tighter, a bit harder. Was it, did, you, did you sense it was a little bit more difficult as it went on? Yeah, I thought I went out, tried to stamp my authority on it, and then I knew we were going to come like he does throw a lot of shots. So instead of trying to rush things, just stay behind the defence and keep pressing. Do you think you could have got to him in the second? Because you dropped him early in the round, took your time. I understand that, but do you think you should... He took some great shots, so I know he had a decent yeah. chin, so... It was just about being patient and waiting for the moment and not being too giddy with it. Now, there was a lot of argy-bargy, a lot of talk beforehand, a lot of animosity, and the first two rounds were that way. Do you think that played into your hand? I don't know. Like, we had a bit of a few words exchanged before the fight, but that's just boxing. It builds the excitement. But was that your, was the idea to try and drag him out of being Tommy Stalker and get him in the middle of the ring? But that's what he does anyway. He comes to throw thousands of punches, so... If I'd rattled him, he was going to do that anywhere. And when you were catching him with those shots, were they, I mean, obviously you dropped him, but could you sense they were hurting him as well? Yeah, we're looking to hurt him. Yeah. Lee, did it, did it unfold just about like you expected it to? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, in the first couple of rounds, because I did think it wouldn't go past three. I, I knew Jack would catch him. Uh, this kid can really, really punch, as you can see. Yeah. Um, he kind of just like, you know, on the second, on the second round knockdown, he kind of just, I don't know if it was like a little bit of nerves, panicking, or, you know, think about the ten rounds. But he just shut down a little bit and just and got into kind of a comfort zone yeah. um, where if he really you know stepped step forward he could have really put it on Tom and I think he could have got a stoppage earlier. Now, during like the third and the fourth and the fifth round, which there was not a lot in those rounds, you and Nick and I think were the strong were the stronger punches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was, he was winning them, but it was, they weren't hard rounds. They were just touching, touching. Jack, to be honest, like Jack, obviously there, if he watched it really, he boxed the shit out of him easily. It was only one round that Tom really had involved in that fight there. Yeah. I mean, Tom was trying to come in. It, and in a couple of rounds, Tom was trying to bring Jack forward. Like, he's got real quick feet. We don't need to have really quick feet. You've seen Jack's defence there. He couldn't hit him. The eyes only opened up because of an accidental head clash. You know, that fight there, Jack was dominating that fight. He was really dominating that fight. He's, he's just turned 21. You know, he's really, really strong. He can punch with both hands, as you saw. And he just outboxed, you know, a, a, a top amateur there. Um, didn't, you know, the, you know, big crowd here in his hometown. He kept himself together, you know. He showed a lot of class there, Jack, tonight. Now, you spied a lot of rounds of him as an amateur, and Lee's on record as saying if it was an amateur contest, then Tommy Stalker would probably win. Were you surprised how easy it was for you in some of the rounds? Yeah, I knew it was easy to catch, but the shots to there, they were just... I don't know, it just seems like it doesn't move his head enough, he's just there to be hit. Just there to be hit. Tommy Stalker went back to the change room. We did want to speak to him. We might drag him out a bit later on. Back to you, Jim.